What's up? And welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today, we are going to be back in Orchard Vale. I just wanted to uh, show you the, well, one, wanted to grab some more iron, and two, wanted to show you all the work that I've been doing. So at the beginning, you saw a time lapse, and uh, we did quite a bit of work, and I'm really happy with how everything has turned out. I've done a little bit of work in between episodes, uh, well, in between the time lapse and the beginning of this episode. Um, so I wanted to show you, walk around, and uh, talk about the things that we built, and then we're going to get into a tavern build, uh, doing the interior and the exterior, and uh, I think it's going to be a really fun time. So without further ado, let's take a teleport over to Orchard Vale. All right, as you can see, well, something's something's off. Um, I'm not sure exactly why we landed in water. Oh, oh, the cola skate is a little worse for wear. Um, okay, uh, yeah, this is not how I left it, but okay, what happened here? Oh, this one fell over. Hmm. Well, as you can see, this is the cola skate here. I figured it should be pretty daggum worn down and uh, taken over by the swamp. Eventually, I'm going to extend the swamp like um, that sort of stuff over there. I'm going to extend that all through here to kind of take over this entire section. And the horse, of course, is not going to be in there. Um, so this entire area is going to look very much like that. Um, and so I wanted to make this, I, I kind of wanted to make it look a bit like a pond. Um, and so that you could kind of mistake it and not really know that it's a cola skate. And so I really like what this has turned out. I think it's pretty cool for this one to get the underwater effect and the ability to teleport. We have a note block down there that when you, with an observer below it. So when you slap it, um, it teleports you because the observer observes the change of state of the note of the note block and so it'll actually teleport you um, and so that's pretty cool as you can see works beautifully and then you land in the water and i think it's pretty cool i like it i it makes you, it definitely makes you feel like oh something's off here um and i really like it so this is the build we're going to be working on today, this tavern right here. But let's take a look at some of these houses. I absolutely love all of these houses. They were so fun to work on and so they I don't know. They were just this style is very interesting. We definitely need to do a village that's not destroyed in this style. Um, OK, so the sun's going down. I'm going to go sleep and then let's get into talking about some of these builds and what I did to achieve the abandoned look. So let's start off with looking at the first build that we made here. And so this is the first one I started off with with making uh, more of the abandoned style. This is the one that we originally started out with. This one is going to have people in it. There is smoke coming out. Um, it's going to we're going to make an interior so that it's actually like nice and livable. I did make the fire and like make that so that looks at least a little decent. Um, and so this one is is definitely the most livable. Nothing has really happened. People have repaired it maybe. Um, but this one, as you can see, is pretty dilapidated and destroyed. So the, even the middle post is broken. Nothing is actually uh, connected that well. Um, uh, in, in the time lapse, I made this out of uh, birch logs, stripped birch logs, but I eventually went to the planks because if you're wanting to build broken, you're going to want to throw in a lot of stairs and slabs, and I never thought of that at the beginning of making this, so I swapped all the birch, stripped birch logs out for the birch planks. It goes just as fine with the sand, and uh, then you can have these gaps where you can actually see inside the building, and that's what really starts making it feel dilapidated. All the way around here, you can see holes in it. We've even got some windows still in here, but you can see holes all over the place. Vines growing everywhere. Honestly, the vines have gone a bit crazy. Um, you even have holes up in the roof section. Again, this post doesn't go all the way up. Even has some of this right here. And the entrance is still here, and I'm going to make this uh, coarse dirt and path block and just put a bunch of uh, 
plants and maybe some bushes growing up in there. So it'll have a quote unquote interior, but it's not going to be nearly as, um, it's going to have like a vegetative interior. And as you can see, the there is a tree growing out of the roof. I thought this was a cool idea. We've got two trees, one in that one and one in this one. This one is a, tr is a tree that has actually grown into the building and like grown right here in the corner. But um, this one, it, this helps show you exactly how long this has been abandoned because a tree this size would not be able to grow in a house like this overnight. It's not, and it, it would take, this has been at least a hundred years that this type of tree would have been able to grow inside a house like this. And so doing things like this can really set yourself up for um, the ability to tell a story just through the use of inferred time. Um, and so I think that is pretty cool as well. Uh, the next thing we moved on to as you, oh, oh yeah, look at that. Look at all them banners. Been getting all sorts of raid parties. It's so stupid. Um, this one is actually super cool. I really like it. So this one is a house that actually burnt down and uh, it is, somebody has actually picked it back up and is using it again. I'm not really sure why. Uh, low lifes aren't necessarily the smartest people. Um, but this was really fun to do. I start. I went in building this knowing I wanted to make it actually feel like it had been burnt down. So I went in knowing I'm not going to build up the middle section of the roof. I didn't want the roof to connect. And I wanted just parts of it to still be there and intact. And then we threw a bunch of campfires on top of it to make it actually look like some of the lumber is kind of loose and uh, still there. And of course, coal blocks everywhere makes for a really nice um a really nice burnt effect oh and one other thing that i did that i think so if you're making burn if you're using like we're using spruce um to do the primary roof texture well this since it's burnt i went and used a lot of dark oak because it is basically like it's either a dark brown wood or a burnt spruce in my mind. And so I like to do this sort of effect with the uh, dark oak taking over. Even some of the sp stripped logs are actually um, stripped dark oak instead of stripped spruce. So it's just another detail to be able to sell this burnt down effect. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. Even have some burning effect down here. And I even threw some andesite in because it's darker. Threw some andesite into the building, not a ton, but down in the bottom there is some andesite. You can also see that the the roof you can really tell now is very weird looking because it doesn't connect here. So this is probably very precarious and not actually super that super supportive. Um, but I wanted it to feel that way. I also wanted to show that the chimney had, when this became structurally unsound, the chimney had fallen over, and uh, it was interesting trying to make this type of chimney fall over because we don't have vertical slabs or anything like that. So I had to make it like it had fallen flat and really just like sprawled out. And so we've got even some trapdoor structures here and uh, just lying around. It's it's a it's a fun thing, fun little things you can add just to make a building look pretty dilapidated. And of course, lots of holes in this one because it did get burnt down. Now the inside is actually kind of quote unquote finished. Um, this is similar to what I'm meaning without the, uh, of course, the coal blocks, um, but this one has been picked up for some reason. Somebody is living in this um, and for, I don't know exactly why, but the chimney still works apparently. So got some wooden stuff and they're really just using it as a place to hole up. This one is similar um, to this one. I have a hole here in the roof. Maybe we can see it from the other side. The hole in the roof is just there to show that this one also was affected a bit. You can see some coal blocks. Um, this one was also affected by the fire just a little bit, not a ton. Um, it's still very much livable, but this one has been taken over a bit by this swamp. And uh, so this interior of this is actually swampy and we do have a hole where the fire actually got to this house. And so just some more storytelling that you can do 
with your builds. Now these are great. Doing the interiors of these is not bad at all because we're not actually doing the interiors. Everything, I know, basically what I'm saying is everything that was on the inside that was like people's stuff either was taken when they tried to leave, if they tried to leave, or it what has been so long that it's all been pretty much disintegrated and just and destroyed. Now moving right along to this house. This is definitely one of my favorite trees that I've ever done. Um, I had the idea of why not make it so a tree, we have a tree growing in a house, why not have a tree falling over onto a house? And so that is what I went to this uh, house thinking, let's do that. Um, and so we've got a tree that I made that has fallen over and I think it has turned out really really cool uh, of course when you when trees fall over they pull up all their roots and stuff and so I have this tree that's kind of grown over like fallen over this way but it's still living it's still able to live in this situation I just wanted to make it like it's kind of become one with the house now of course there's parts of the roof that are missing because the tree smushed it and there are bits where the structure took a hit because of i mean a tree falling on you puts a lot of stress on it and so the interior here is also taken over by swamp eventually most everything is going to be swampified like this uh, i think for the swamp what we're going to just do is path block and coarse dirt and just leave it at that that's pretty easy pretty simple um, but this is where, this right here is a perfect example of how you can get destroyed or abandoned look without much effort. Make the wall so that you could see the outer bracings. And that just may, suddenly this, this just looks utterly destroyed. You've got bits and pieces of the wall uh, just hanging there. You've got the outer bracings that you know should not be visible. And you've even got some portions in here that you actually can't see through. So you're like, well, that's not right. Um, and then, of course, you've got the roof. Now, this wall, I'm going to probably build up a little bit just to make it look similar to this so that it looks a little more uh, jaggedy up here. But other than that, I think it's going to be it's pretty much done. Now, this house is pretty cool. I actually really like this. So this the concept of this was just that this one's been sunken in on this side to the swamp we've got the swamp bits over here this is kind of where the uh, sort of river portion fizzles out and so we've got a, a swamp section right here that has begun to take over and this house has sunken into it and so of course this this side of the house is very unstable and part, parts of it have actually become uh, dilapidated and falling apart and things and so I need to put some diorite and stuff that's like down in here like it's fallen over um, but the sun is going down. Let me sleep. I'm gonna sleep in the hobo area first. But this one's pretty cool. I think it's it's very nice. Uh, I don't know how much in the interior. Oh yeah, okay. So I did the full interior. You can tell swamp really taken over. Um, I need to put some maybe some bushes and leaves and things. But this mixture is really nice, don't you think? Our diorite with our birch. I really like it. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and so this is just yet another abandoned destroyed house this one is nothing really too special to write home about um it's a diagonal house if you like diagonal houses uh definitely like i would be totally down to do a tutorial of this type of diagonal house because it does actually go out one two three so it is a pretty decent diagonal um and this is i, I really wanted to experiment with uh how to do sort of the a house on a diagonal the chimney also is bigger than usual because it is a diagonal uh, building it had a white i made it wider right here so it does have quite the chimney um, but this house may have someone living in it as well um, but nobody really special and then there's this house, which still is under construction a bit for me because I, I don't know, I, I've made it basically so, oh, poor zombie. I've made it so that it's basically just being torn apart by the swamp, that it's become so unstable on the bottom that it's just slowly falling apart and kind of disintegrating before our eyes. So I need to make the wall a little bit chunkier up here. Um, but other than that, it's looks, looking pretty good. This is kind of the theme, swamp taking over. Um, and then I think that is it. That's all the houses we've made so far. So 
Today, what we're going to be getting into is the tavern. I want to uh, go ahead and build that up. I'm going to try and do the exterior pretty lickety split, and then we're going to get into some interior design. I think you guys might like that. Oh, this is one thing I changed. Um, I forgot. There was a diagonal house that was going to be here, and I've changed things up a little bit. Uh, this is actually going to be a water mill with a wheel that goes right here. I think this is a good spot. Kind of may, maybe there's a little flowing bits of water. Maybe this river actually continued that way for a bit. Um, and so this is going to be a water mill. And the pathway is actually going to go through this building. And so it's going to, there's going to be this um, sort of this tunnel that it's going to go through. And then there's going to be a, a bridge here. This ground is actually going to come out to about here, and I'm going to continue terraforming this a bit so that there will be a bridge that starts and can connect right to here um, to this. This is where sort of a sacred oak tree is going to be. Sacred um, apple tree. I don't know exactly what to call it, but um, and then there's going to be the bridge that goes right over to here and connects back up to this path and maybe there's just like a little park place that's all overgrown and destroyed here um and so i am uh really th i think that's a good a good thing i think we have plenty of houses now we need to get some uh, sort of industrial stuff in to make this house actually or make this um town actually have some reason for being here so we're gonna have a water mill and we're gonna have a windmill and i think it's gonna be good as i said we're gonna do this let me gather up materials and get pre uh, prepped and ready for it and then uh, i'll be back and i think maybe what i'm gonna do is build up the walls they're just gonna be made out of sandstone and be pretty plain um, and then i want to really do the interior with you so i'm gonna do some step-by-step -step stuff uh, real quickly on the exterior and then we'll get into the interior. So if that sounds good to you. I'll be back in just a few. All right, I've got a bit of an update for you. So I went ahead and made the roof and put some of the walls in. Didn't put in these quite yet um, and decided to do the roof because we built the other one, uh, that one, we built that on camera. So it's nothing new, uh, same exact thing, just modified a bit so we could have a, a double arch sort of thing um on that side and this side um so it was interesting it made for a little bit of an interesting little gap right in this little corner area but overall i think it looks good um and i've done a little planning on the inside here so first off you're going to step up into the building now i need to make this an arch and we're going to do that really quick um, so you step up and this is where the main bar i think is going to be uh, main bar is going to be right back here and maybe some seating right here and basically just wanted this to look run down um, and be a little bit kind of old maybe i'll have actually some grass growing in here and <clears throat> then it's going to step down here and this is going to be kind of the seating area if you will and then what I'd like to do is to make a staircase right here to get up to this level. Um, and then all up here is going to be some various rooms to stay in. And this is actually down here is going to be one big giant, um, what's it called? Roof. Like you actually can see the roof and things. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more work on the exterior here. Um, basically all what I'm wanting to do is modify this a bit. I want to make this, uh, have a nice curve to it similar. So it's going to be just like these things on the front door. So basically all it is, is we're going to have some stair here, here, and then I just got to look at it and then I think I can replicate it. And now we have a nice little arch. And I think I'm going to do that here and here as well. This one's going to be kind of fungalicious. Uh, actually, maybe let's not do it here. We'll do one here. Um, and then I might do one in the center of this wall here for funsies. I'm not sure. Um, but the backside definitely could use some um, as well because we have plenty of space here to make this interesting so we'll do like maybe three of those here just to make it a little more fun so that just wanted to give you an update and uh, now let's uh, get back and uh, i will continue building and then we'll tackle the inside real quick all right so we got the this done this one looks a little funny because we don't have this but 
we can fix that. It'll look a little different because of the uh, weirdness here. What we could actually do is just make this a one tall, and I think that'll probably be the best situation for that window because we can't do this weirdness, so we do have to have this kind of awkwardness right here, but that's okay. That's not a problem. So the inside here looks pretty decent. Um, so far, I left this blank so we could put some stuff on the walls because um, there could be a window right here, but we don't need there to be. Uh, working on the staircase now, and I wanted to bring you in just to do a little bit of a planning of the upper area. So I'm thinking we're gonna have some slabs right here. And the fun thing about slabs that you can uh, have for floors is you can add some depth with some stripped logs looking like beams. Ooh, we're out. Well, that's okay. We can do this. So we're going to take this right here and strip these. And then let's go... Why don't we do that? We'll, do th we'll make it so that there's a beam every other block and if we decide against it not that bad to have some stripped spruce because that is one of the major building blocks for this area and so that really helps add a lot of depth to the uh it's the uh, ceiling here it makes it so it actually looks pretty neat you don't really have to do too much now to it it looks all supported as well that's one of the key things that i find uh, ceilings can be tough about um, so now we're going to move on and do some of this. So let's go ahead and fill this in. Now we have this upper area and I'm thinking, so you need, when you have bigger spaces like this, you need to think of how you're going to break the space up. Now for a, a space this big, it's not like huge but we definitely want to make it so it is a bit smaller so what i'm thinking is we're going to make a wall that runs right here to give this hallway a bit of space but then also make it so the rooms can be relatively big and by relatively big i mean like that big so they're not going to be very big literally just going to be maybe a nightstand and a bed but it doesn't need to be much more one two and one, two, and this one can maybe be just a touch bigger. All right, got some of the interior done. I've been working down here, but I have an idea that I'd like to test out up here. Just finish this off. A lot of spruce going on up here, but I think that's okay. Interiors are done and dusted. Beds in every single room. It's looking good. I really, really like it. So down here, what I'm thinking is this is what I originally was going for, but then I was like, well, maybe we should mix it up and make it so not so sprucey all the time. And so we're going to not spruce it up if you get my drift. So I'm thinking maybe instead let's make some chairs by doing this. And boom, there we go. That is a chair, and I think it looks pretty daggum good. Now what I'm thinking here is we actually make these into tables. I think these actually work really well for tables, um, and I think that's going to be a nice change. Same thing here. Let's make this a table with a light and then some signs. Now this is going to be interesting. I don't think this one's going to have to be, I think, a actually... Why don't we make this one like this? And then we'll make this one the stair. And boom. So now you've got a nice little sitting area. Now this is not the best seat in the world, but maybe it's a child seat. I don't know why you'd bring a child to a place like this, but moving on, I was think the reason I was thinking this was I, I think we should have some different types of bar duels and i'm thinking maybe we do it like this we'll have maybe two here and one right here and then we can kind of put a chair here and let's put this light right here and put this like that so then we've got some chairs that are just chilling right here and i think this will be pretty nice all right, I actually did a bit of work. Sorry, um, my brain just was not able to commentate and also work on this. So just really wanted to quickly point out that I have two 
or three actually, we've got some painting textures that I have uh, taken from FWIP's texture pack. Um, I thought these were really, really cool, and uh, I definitely think that they are pretty awesome. Um, I think they're really well made, and I think they look really nice. Uh, so pots and pans and knives, wooden spoon, I don't know what that is. We're going to call it a paddle. Um, and then some potions. And I thought that was a really cool idea. And so I uh, definitely love this. I think this looks really good. Got some kegs up here. Oh, and this is parchment. The kind of like, almost like a wanted poster is what my mind kind of sees it as. Um, got a keg right here, some extra kegs up here in a barrel. I'm gonna put a dead plant in here. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the bar area all done and dusted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this, but I'm gonna do this off camera just to get it done lickety split. And then uh, I will be back to show you the final results. All right, guys, we are finished with the tavern and I really love what is going on with it. Um, so I've done a, a fair amount of work and I, I, I want to show you. I think you guys are going to really, really like it. So without further ado, wha-bam. So what have we done? Well, as you can see, it is um, nice and landscaped on the outside. And I've finished, added a little bit of a, the garden area that would have been in the front before it was abandoned. But now... It's all really overgrown. The swamp has started to take over, and it's just, ouch, run my face into the wall. Um, it's really just supposed to be like overgrown and kind of gross feeling. And so I added this little walkway through here. So this would be like one of the main entrances to get into the bar area. Or if you don't want to do that, it used to be you could walk in the center there, but now it's really only two pathways to get in. And I really, really love how this has turned out. Um, as you can see, I also decorated in here and, and threw in some grass, decided let's throw in some grass. And I, I think it looks really nice. Got a trash can right here. Just a couple tables, nothing really too special, but I think this place has turned out really, really nice. And on the side here, I added in barrels as the side on this side. I thought it would be kind of fun to try and change it up, and I think it looks really, really nice. Added some plants and stuff here, because we can't have a window here, so it just had to be a wall. And then added some really overgrown bushes and things here. There were planters, but they've really become wild and, and crazy. Now, there's bushes right there, but I want to show you from this side. So I added a door here, but you see it's been blocked off. You can't actually, like, see it. You can't actually go out there, but you can open it. And, oh, there we go. But then you're like, what? Why is there all these bushes? Oh, gosh. Okay, there we go. And... The reason for that is because of a fallen tree. And so I thought this would be a really fun idea to do. Um, let's uh, build up a little bit of a thing right here. So I thought it would be fun it, to kind of, there's a deck area right there that you can kind of see. There's a post there and a deck underneath it. And the deck, it was actually like kind of made um, for it. And I, I could have decorated it out, um, but instead I was like, you know what? Why don't we make it seem like a tree has actually fallen over? And so I've made this fun little area here. Um, and as you can see, I even dipped the ground down because the earth has been pulled up here. So there would be a divot in the ground wherever the tree had pulled up its roots. And so I thought that was a really fun idea. I'm going to do this concept over at the other tree. And I think this is a, a really fun idea. Also added that over there, uh, added the side there. And I am just so happy with this. Now, the one thing I do have to do that I keep forgetting to do is to cover this up. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe I'll make like a chair or something there. We'll just do that and say there's a chair <laughs> that survived the crash. Um, and we'll break this and do that. And then we'll take this and do that. Boom. Fixed. Okay. So now, now there's like a chair and stuff there, but I really like this idea and I think it's pretty cool. Um, now 
one thing that we still have to do for this area is to figure out the roadway. We've kind of taken over a fair amount of where the road was going to be with this build. It was going to go like right along here, but I think it was worth it. I think this build is really cool um, and I really love it. So I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you like everything that's been made. I think it looks really, really cool. I really love this place. And uh, I definitely am looking forward to continuing to build in here. Um, so please let me know any build concepts you would like to be built in this town. If you think something should be added. And uh, let me know what you think of the tavern. So without further ado guys, I hope you guys liked it. Leave a like in real life. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.